Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we're going to paint a foggy forest. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials and let's get started. For today's painting we're going to use the following colors. Titanium white, Mars black, a tiny bit of cadmium yellow deep hue, hooker's green, and a color that I don't use very often, ultramarine blue. Now the reason I'm using ultramarine blue instead of phthalo blue, even though they look quite similar, is because of their temperature. Ultramarine blue leans a little bit more toward the violet side, while phthalo blue leans a little bit more toward the green side. Since I'm mixing it with green, if I use phthalo, I'm gonna get a very bright color. And I don't want it to be too bright and too green because that will change the feel that I'm going for in my painting. Since ultramarine blue leans a little more toward the violet side, when I mix it with hooker's green, which leans a little more to the yellow side than the blue side, I'm gonna get a little more of a neutralized color that's gonna help add to the mysterious quality that I want in my fog. We'll go into color theory a little bit more in a future video, but just think about what kind of a feel you want for your painting. You can use any color you want for the fog. If you wanted it to feel a little more mysterious and a little more like a fantasy type painting, you could go with purples, pinks, but my point in telling you why I picked the two colors I did is so that you take the time to experiment with the colors first. Just because you always use phthalo blue doesn't mean that it's always the right blue for the feel that you're going for. Decide, grab a couple colors, mix, and play with them on a piece of paper before you commit it to your canvas. You guys also really liked the glazing video where we painted the Buddha and have been asking for a lot more glazing videos. So today we're going to use glazing medium again and that's how we're gonna achieve the fog effect. You can do it without the glazing medium. You would just use a little bit more water until your paint is almost runny. But even then, it doesn't quite give you the exact same effect. The brushes we'll be using are a one inch flat brush, a half inch angle brush, I have a kind of large round brush here. I just want something with a little less definite shape than my angle brush for when we wash the light around the lamppost. I have a small shader brush or a flat brush. This one's about a quarter of an inch and a small round brush. It says it's a number four, but again, those numbers don't really mean anything because a number four in one brand is gonna be bigger or smaller than a number four in another brand. All right, to start off with, we're gonna lay down the value of our background. Now, value refers to how light or how dark a color is. And so I'm only gonna be using black and white for this part. So I have my one inch flat brush. I'm gonna wet it in the jar, and wipe it off on the edge. And just remember to go back and get a little extra water whenever you feel like you need it if your paint isn't spreading properly. I also forgot to mention that this is a 12 by 16 inch canvas and I pre-painted it white. Now the reason that I used white paint rather than gesso is because I feel like the white paint gives it a little bit more of a smoother texture where gesso tends to be a little bit drier and has more of a tooth to it so it can make the paint harder to spread around and I just wanted a smoother surface. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to load it up with white paint. I'm not gonna worry about colors being blended or anything here, because once we start glazing the fog over top of it, it's really gonna hide a lot of those lines and stuff. So all I'm concentrating on is getting a brighter spot in the center, darker edges, and a nice dark ground. So I've got a bunch of white, and I'm just gonna grab just a little bit of black and just kind of work it on here. keeping in mind where my brightest part is gonna be, right about here in the center. And now I'm gonna grab a little bit more black since I'm going out toward the edges.
and pretty much just black on the edges here. There's still some white on my brush. So because the glazing medium is very transparent, I'll still see the value that I'm laying down here under it. So it will appear that it's darker around the edges and brighter in the middle, even though my glaze is gonna be a consistent color for the most part. Now down here at the bottom, I'm just gonna grab black and give myself a ground. doesn't have to be blended in, doesn't have to be a hard line, because we're going to add a lot of grasses and trees, and so that's going to cover it up, but then the fog is also going to cover it. Okay, now I am going to let this dry, and then we'll come back and start painting our forest. All right, now we're going to paint some trees, and we're going to paint several layers of trees. And after painting each layer of trees, we'll do a glaze. Now, every time we add another layer of glaze, the first set of trees is gonna be pushed farther and farther into the distance. In fact, it's quite possible at the end, you'll barely be able to see that first layer of trees. But the fact that they're there, even the tiniest bit, is gonna really add some depth to your painting. So I'm gonna use my half inch angle brush, and this is a really kind of an old brush. Can you see it's a little bit puffed out? So if you don't have a nice clean edge, that's gonna to be totally okay here. So I'm gonna wet it in the jar and leave a little extra water in it. And I'm gonna go into my black paint, just load it up on each side. And I want my trees to be very big. I want to give the illusion that they're huge, huge trees. And the way I'm going to do that is by just simply making each tree nothing but a straight line that goes off the canvas. We'll also add a few little branches poking down here and that will tell your eye that these trees are huge. So the easiest way for me to draw a straight line down is to stand directly in front of where I'm going to draw the line put my pinky on the canvas and just let gravity bring my arm straight down. For this first set of trees, I'm gonna do about seven. I like to work in odd numbers. I think it's more interesting than working in even numbers. So I'm gonna do seven trees and they're gonna be fairly narrow. Each set of trees I'm gonna do fewer of and they're gonna get a little bit wider. So I've got some black paint and I'm gonna start here at the top so my angle brush is pointing up since I'm gonna be moving down. Remember, you always want the tip of that brush to drag. So I'm gonna start here at the very top. I've got my hand on the canvas and I'm just gonna let my arm fall straight down. That's how you draw a straight line. If you hold your brush like this and just let it hover, you might be able to do it, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. Now I'm going to go back over it and just put a little more pressure on my brush to widen out the trunk a little bit as it goes down. Get a little extra water on your brush when you need. And I'm just going to add the other trees and then we'll move on to some branches. Do try and space your trees out. Don't put them all, you know, an inch and a half apart and make like a big line. Kind of stagger them around. So I'm gonna start that one over there. And when I do my next one, I'm gonna make sure that I don't put it in exactly the same spot on the other side. I just got a little extra water there because my paint was not covering as well as I want it to. I 
All right, so there's my seven trees. And notice I didn't worry about these imperfections in them. They're gonna be faded into the background, and so a lot of those you won't be able to see. But let's say that I really messed up one of these trees, and maybe I, maybe I did something like that to the tree, and I really hate that. It's okay, I'm not gonna worry about it. I would still leave that there. I'm not gonna clean that off, because, like I said, we're gonna add several layers of trees here. So I can take my next tree and just put it over top of that spot and you won't even see it. So yep, I'm gonna leave that there. So I'm gonna grab some more black paint and we're gonna do some little branches. Just like with the tree trunks, do not put too much attention into these. Just give an indication that they're there. So I have the tip of the brush pointing up and I'm only using just the very last few bristles on the brush. That's how I'm gonna draw my branches. If you are more comfortable using a small round brush, you can go ahead and do that. But if you put your brush like this, you're gonna get some really heavy branches. And that's fine when we get to the closer trees, but for these ones, just put your hand on the canvas and use those last couple of hairs on the tip of the brush. So I'm just gonna kinda of come out from here and just draw. Just an indication of a branch. And another one over here. I'm just gonna do a few of them throughout. Now we're gonna add some grasses to kind of cover up the base of these trees and any lines here that you don't like. So get an extra drip of water on your brush and mix the paint on your brush in with that little bit of water and that will help you get some nice sharp little grasses. So I'm gonna start from the ground and go up so my angle brush is pointing downward. And again, I'm only just using the last few bristles. I'm not using the full length of the brush. So I'm just gonna start down here and kind of flick upwards. Make sure that your grasses all point different directions. Some of them can be longer, shorter, fatter, thinner. It makes it a lot more interesting than if you just go da 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 like that and see how spaced out they are. Kind of pack them together a little bit. It's okay if you cover that whole ground. But you don't need to go all the way to the bottom of the canvas. Just kind of in line with the base of your tree trunks. Now we're gonna draw some little trees. Just very simple. Don't put a lot of detail into them. They're gonna be lost in the, in the fog anyway. My brush is pointing down and I'm just gonna kind of come up, kind of like with the branches we did coming off of the top. Just a very simple shape. I'm only using the last couple bristles on the brush. And I think I'll just put three of them. I kind of like using this cruddy angle brush because it's puffed out, because it gives me really raw edges to these branches. And I think that helps give these trees a little bit more personality. So I went and got my blow dryer because I'm super impatient, but also because we want to make sure this is 100% dry because we're going to glaze next. And if this is wet at all, you're going to drag that black around. You'll smear your paint and you'll change the color of your fog. All right, now we're going to start glazing and I'm going to use my one inch filbert brush. 
and that's because it's just very soft. So if you don't have a filbert, that's fine. Just use a brush that is very soft. So I'm gonna wet it in the jar. And because it's a soft brush, it can sometimes make pushing paint around difficult. So I'm not gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna leave a little more water in it than normal. I'm just kind of shake it. So my hooker's green and my ultramarine blue, and I just put out enough glazing medium to use for this layer. Since the glazing medium dries really fast, if you put out a ton of it, by the time you're done, it's gonna be really drying out and getting thick. So just put out as much as you're gonna use at a time. I'm gonna mix up a blue-green here. And I'm gonna get a bit of white. So it's a pretty light color. And now I'm gonna come into my glazing medium and get quite a bit of it. I just grabbed a drop more water. And I'm gonna start laying this on very thinly. And while you're doing this first layer, you may be looking at it going, oh no, what have I done? A little more water to thin out this spot here. Trust me that you will love the way this looks in a few minutes. But whenever I do this first layer, I think, oh, I ruined it. Just make sure you keep your brush fairly damp. I keep getting a little bit of extra water. Don't worry about the very bottom of the canvas. Mix up a little more. A little more water and some glazing medium. And that was pretty thick, but that's okay. So I'll just get a little more water and spread it out. Just make sure you don't have any lines from the brush. Scrape off a bit of that. Make sure all the little spots are filled. I don't have black spots poking out. Tiny bit more water. And just work at it until it looks about right. Now you can let your glaze dry in between each layer if you want. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna start painting my next layer of trees. So I'm going back to my angle brush and black paint. Now I'm only going to do five trees this time because as the trees get closer I wouldn't be able to see quite as many of them and my trees are going to be a little bit wider than these ones. So I'm going to do it the same way by starting at the top and letting my hand just move straight down. Try not to pay attention to where these trees are when you're laying down the next ones. They can overlap so what I mean is don't try and fit each layer of trees in between the other ones. Like with this one where I had that bump, I'll end up putting a tree over top of that and you may not be able to really see this tree at the end. Just put them wherever you think they're gonna be the most interesting. So I think I'm gonna start with one over here. I just put a little extra pressure on my brush to widen it out at the bottom.
Now remember when I started putting the glaze on and I told you not to worry about what it looked like, that it was probably gonna look really weird when you put that first layer on. But notice now that we have some darker trees, it does push those trees farther into the distance and makes it look like there's some fog there. So let's go ahead and do our little branches. Got a little extra water on my brush that I'm just mixing in with the paint. And these branches now are gonna be a little bit bigger than these ones, just like these trees are a little bit bigger than the first ones. And I'm gonna put them in different places. I'm even gonna make one right here, kind of coming off of the side. That will give the indication that there are more trees off to either side. And the same thing down here. We're gonna do some grasses. I'm not gonna put the grasses where these ones are. I'm gonna put them right about the base of the tree line here. And definitely make some of them a little longer. So they kind of shoot up past that first grass line. Keep it from looking like two separate planes. It'll give the illusion that there's more in between. and then we're gonna add some little trees again. And these ones, just like with everything else, are gonna be a little bit bigger than these first ones, and maybe a little bit more detailed. All right, I'm gonna hit it with the blow dryer one more time and then we'll glaze again. All right, let's glaze again. I have a little bit more glazing medium out and my brush is quite wet again. And I'm gonna mix up as close to the same color as I used the first time as possible. If it's a little different, that's okay. Quite a bit of medium and a little extra water. And that first layer of trees that we put on is gonna be pushed even farther back now. little extra water when you get it too heavy. And kind of scrub at it to push it around a bit. Really got it pretty heavy on this side. So I'm gonna wash quite a bit of it away with some extra water. Just soften up those lines. And I'm even gonna use my hand a little bit. Because I really got way too much on this side. There we go, much better. Now see how those first layer of trees, they're way back in the distance now. And I think 
some of them are gonna be completely gone. We've already lost this first tree that I did here. This one is almost gone. And some of these little branches are starting to disappear. Let's do another layer of trees. Again, these ones are gonna be bigger than the last ones. And I think I'm only gonna do three. I'm gonna put one here so it covers up that ugly bump. And really widen this one out. If your trees aren't perfectly straight, they've got some wobbles, maybe they do bend a little bit to one side or the other, that's okay. Because not all trees grow in a perfectly straight up and down fashion. So just don't be hard on yourself if you can't get it straight up and down. Just make sure they all look consistent and then they'll look like they're growing in the same forest. I think I'm gonna put my main tree, the tree that I'm gonna leave black, I'm gonna put it on this side. So I'm gonna put my third tree over here. All right, let's add our grasses. And some more small trees and they're gonna be bigger than the previous ones and our small branches at the top and they're gonna come down farther and be a little wider. We're gonna let this dry again, and we're gonna come back and do one more glaze. All right, one more layer of our blue-green fog. Whoa, I had a little spot of black there that wasn't quite dry. Streaked into it, that's all right. Go ahead and take this layer all the way to the very bottom. All right, one more layer. I'm gonna do one large tree some more branches hanging down, and my grasses.
And I'm working these grasses all the way from the bottom of the canvas and my tree went off the bottom as well. I'm turning my brush flat here at the very bottom just to make sure that that bottom edge is completely filled in. But I'm still just flicking it up so I don't get a hard line. And I decided against putting another one of these trees. Now we're gonna draw our lantern and I'm gonna have my lantern be right about here so it's just slightly to the left of center and we're gonna use this small round brush to draw it. If you need to sketch out your lantern first in pencil, that's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna get some black paint, and just like how we were drawing the trees by letting our hand drag down the canvas, that's how I'm gonna draw the lantern. So I'm gonna start right about, right about here, and just draw a line straight down. and then you can refine it. I'm just using the very end of my brush. I'm not putting full pressure on it. If I put full pressure on it, I'm gonna get a fat line. And I want to be able to control how wide the line is. I'll probably make it wider as we go, but I just wanna start with a nice thin line. Now I'm gonna draw a line that's gonna be the base of the lantern. So right about, right about there. And I drew mine maybe a little bit longer than a half inch. Decide how tall you want the actual lantern to be and draw another line above it that's wider than this bottom one. I'm gonna go right about here. And just draw a line straight across. And then I'm gonna connect them. Let's give our post a little bit more shape. So I'm gonna widen it out here a bit on either side of that line. And I'll just put a little decorative line going across here. So I put a little more pressure on my brush at times so I got a wider line. And then under it, I'm gonna give my post a little bit of a, a little bit of a shoulder on either side. And then slowly swoop that down into the post. But if this is too much detail work for you, then you don't have to do it. And like I said, you can absolutely draw it on first and then fill it in. Now I'm putting more pressure on my brush, so I'm getting a wider line. I got me a little bit of my cadmium yellow deep hue, and I'm gonna use my little flat brush I wet it in the jar and I'm gonna grab some white, bring it over to my yellow and mix them in until I have kind of a bright solid yellow. And then I'm just gonna fill this little section in. I'm gonna grab a little chunk of just yellow 
and just kind of streak a bright spot in there. Grab a little chunk of white and do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna dry it again. I'm taking this ugly round brush and I'm gonna mix a little white in with my yellow. Pretty thin, I've got some extra water in there. I'm gonna grab a bit of this glazing medium that's left over. Kind of like in the Be The Light video, how we scrubbed the circles around the fireflies, that's pretty much what we're gonna do here. Just get a bit of a glow going around it. And I'm gonna get a little bit more of that mixture. And I'm just gonna, with the point of the brush, I'm just gonna kind of scrub on some shine onto this tree right where it would be hitting. Notice I'm not filling it in. I'm just kind of scrubbing it in randomly. Take it down the tree a little bit and up a bit. And around a little bit farther to this side where the lantern is. I think I'm even gonna just grab a little bit of my pure yellow and add a little bit of that in here too. Just kind of dashing at it. I didn't mix any glazing medium with it. And I might even take just the tiniest bit of white and mix it with some glazing medium. Whoa, I got a little green in there. Let's add just a little bit of that to some of these branches that are close. Not the branches with fog on them. Just the black ones that are closer to it. And I think I'll put a little bit in the grass down here. I'm just gonna re-darken this area on the post here because I don't want it faded out so much. And let's give it a top. I'm just gonna draw a little bit of a dome you can get as fancy with it as you want. I'm just gonna go pretty simple. And we'll give it a little decorative piece up top. And we can even take a little bit of our white and yellow and put a little highlight. And maybe a little bit of a brighter, just a couple little spots with some glazing medium of yellow. Just give it some little brighter spots in here. If you got a little crazy with it like I did there, just get a little bit more white in your glazing medium and just kick that back a bit. So if you haven't done the Be The Light video yet, you can use this same technique with the glazing medium when you're doing the fireflies. And there's your awesome foggy forest. I hope you had a great time painting this with me and I'm really excited to see the paintings that you guys do. 
Follow me on Facebook and feel free to post them there for everyone to see or you can send them to me in a private message. There's a link in the description below to my Facebook page. Please get super creative with this and try out different shapes of trees, different colors of fog, anything you can think of. Make sure that you also like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what you'd like to paint in the future. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.